Hey guys, what is going on? Back here again with another video. I know it's been a really long time since I've uploaded, like a month. I'm really sorry about that, but I'm back, here to stay, and this is a brand new video. So in today's video, it's going to be my Corey Haim, uh, Corey Feldman DVD collection. Here. Right. Damn, that's loud. Okay. Um. Anyways, it's going to be my Corey Haim, Corey Feldman DVD collection. The music is fire, though, so I mean, I can't really get mad, but... Corey Haim, Corey Feldman DVD collection. If you don't know who these people are, you've probably seen them in a movie. You didn't even realize. So, I've been collecting their movies for a while. It's one of those actors where it's like, even if you maybe don't... If you wouldn't usually watch a movie, even if they're in it, you're gonna watch it. Like, say you really liked someone like Will Smith. And he's in a movie that maybe you wouldn't usually watch. But because he's in it, you're gonna watch it anyways. That's how it is for these two actors, and they've been in plenty of movies together, which you probably know. It's gonna be my collection of their films that I have on DVD. I don't have all of them, but I have quite a few. If you guys do have any, like, videos you wanna see in the future, let me know in the comments below. But now, let's get started. Okay, guys, so the music is still going on. Hopefully, you guys can't hear it too well. But anyways, let's get into this now. So the first thing that I have here is Gremlins from 1983. You've most likely seen this, or 83 or 84. I feel like it was 83, 84. So, if you don't know what this is about, I'll explain it real quick. You've probably seen this. It's pretty much about these little monsters, and they go around attacking everyone. There's a bit more of a story to it, but I don't want to go too much into it, just because I feel like a lot of people have seen this. But, Corey Feldman was in this. He played the, the little kid holding the Christmas tree. Really cool film, though. Really do like this one. Classic. Um, On the ones that people know more about, I don't want to spend too much time on them. But, yeah, this was, like, one of his first big breakout films, I'd definitely say. He did a couple small things before this, but... This is his first big one. Okay, guys, so next up, we have Corey Haim's first film. Uh, this was his first ever movie. It's called First Born. It was actually pretty cool. As you can see, there's him on the back. It also has young Robert Downey Jr., if you don't know who that is. He's, like, an Iron Man, stuff like that. Uh, Terry Gar as well. You guys probably know her from, like, Mr. Mom and stuff. But, yeah, this, this is a pretty cool movie. To explain it real quick, it's pretty much about these two kids, and their mom is single, and she starts dating this one guy. And he's doing, like, cocaine and shit and um, just some, like, bad stuff. And they're kind of finding out about it and, like, trying to save their mom. It's a drama, but it's it's pretty interesting. I definitely recommend checking it out. All of films released it, and it's honestly a pretty pretty good watch um, if you haven't seen it. And if you could find it, I definitely recommend checking it out. So next up, I have The Goonies. I actually have this on Blu-ray and DVD. You guys have almost, I'm almost positive you guys have seen this. Um, even if you're not a big movie person, you're just watching, you've, probably seen this this dvd like 10 years ago seriously i've had this for a long time you can see by the case where and then uh maybe like two years ago i picked up the blu-ray just for like better quality it still has like all the same features and stuff i believe i do want to get the big set of this that comes with like the board game and all that but these kids go looking for treasure down in this um like i don't know what you call it uh it's like an adventure movie like i said if you haven't seen this you really need to check it out but Great, great film. Uh, you can already tell I love it if I own it on both. Because you guys know I don't usually buy Blu-rays. But definitely, pretty sure you guys have seen this. So I'm not going to go into it too much. But if you haven't, check it out. The Goonies was from 1985. And Firstborn was from 1984. So then this next one came out in 1986. So one year after The Goonies. And this was Corey Haim's like, breakout film. I definitely say, which was Lucas. So if you guys don't know what Lucas is, I'll, I'll explain it real quick. This is actually... It's gone out of print recently, so if you do find this, pick it up, because it's a great film. Amy's kind of a bit of a nerd, and uh, he tries to, like, get on the football team and stuff. And it's just, it's a little bit blurry, because it's been, like, three years since I watched it. But definitely need to rewatch it. Really cool film, though. Um, and, yeah, like I said, it was his, like, first big, big uh, movie. And Charlie Sheen's in this as well. And uh, Carrie Gar, who was also in the previous film I just showed you, The Goonies. So, yeah. Definitely check this one out. Great, great film. Really love it. Also from 1986, another big Corey Feldman film. Uh, probably my one of my favorite films of all time. It used to be my favorite, but like, it's hard to have favorites now because I just like so many films. But that's Stand By Me. Uh, there's Corey Feldman right there. It's about these, what is it, four kids. And this came out in 1986, like I said as well. These four kids, and they all go out looking for a dead body um, to kind of try and find it. Uh, to like be in the newspaper and stuff if you guys haven't seen the film It's gonna sound like a super weird plot, but it's based in like the 1950s. Maybe early 60s Really cool film though. Really love it. Um The music is perfect for this just great film Rob Reiner 
uh, directed this, and it's a Steven Spielberg written story. So not Steven Spielberg, Stephen King uh, written story. So definitely check this one out if you haven't seen it. Next up, I believe in like 1987 or 88, Corey Feldman was running Family Ties. This isn't the exact season he was in, but if you don't know what Family Ties is, it's pretty much about a show, just about a family. The two parents used to be hippies, now they're now they have kids. So crazy, right? Um, yeah, and I believe Corey Feldman played, like, someone at a school election in season, like, four. This is season one, though, but thought I'd still mention that he was in an episode of Family Ties, so, yeah. Next up, I have The Lost Boys, which actually their first ever film together. Uh, so, yeah, just movie about vampires, pretty much. There is Corey Haim right there. You can't really see Feldman, I don't believe, but, yeah, um... Great film, like I said, another one if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's essentially about, and Kiefer Sullivan is in it as well, and the guy from uh, Bill and Ted. But pretty much these uh, this new family moves to this place called Santa Clara, I think it is, uh, Santa Clara. And uh, the two brothers are Sam, and I forget his name. Um, but yeah, they move to Santa Clara, and it's a pretty big place for vampires, I guess. And he starts hanging out with the vampires, and he slowly starts to turn into a vampire. And then it's Sam and his two friends, played by Corey Feldman, and forget the other guy's name, pretty much trying to make sure he doesn't become an actual vampire and kill the vampires. And yeah, really great film from 1987. Definitely check it out if you haven't already seen this one. In 1988 was their second film together, which was Licensed to Drive. Uh, another great film, pretty much. He doesn't... He takes a driving test, Corey Haim, and he does not pass it, but he tells everyone he does. And uh, his parents pretty much find out. He gets grounded, but he has a date with this girl, so he pretty much steals his dad's car, goes out uh, night of the town with her, and it goes unplanned, and a lot of misadventures happen. And uh, there's his friend, uh, Corey Feldman, play, who plays Dean in the film. Good, good movie, though. Um, yeah, really do like this. I don't know if this is still out of print. It is an Anchor Bay release but really cool film you've probably seen this but if you haven't another one check it out so yeah it's actually a blockbuster one you could kind of uh, you could still see the little blockbuster logo right there and yeah this is a really cool film uh pretty much it's just about these people who uh live on the street who are a little bit crazy and it's tom hanks's character and cory Feldman plays like a teenager in this you could see him actually right there that kid right there and, um, yeah, they're just trying to, like, figure out what's wrong with this one house, and it's, like, really creepy, and it's a cool film, though. It was actually shot on the Universal backlot, so if you've ever been to the Universal Studios Hollywood, and you've been on the backlot tour, they do point it out, and, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I've, I've seen it where they filmed it. Pretty cool, but, uh, yeah, good, good film, and I'm not gonna go too much into this, because I feel like it's a pretty known one, but still, had to mention it. 1991, I believe it was, we have The Double O Kid, which was like one of Corey Haim's first films that I feel like he did by himself. Uh, not a good film, um, not a masterpiece, a bit of piece of shit. I liked this one when I was younger, definitely, because um, I first saw this film when I was about 10 or 11, I'd say. And now a couple years has passed, and I just don't really like it as much anymore. Now I'm kind of, now that I'm, you know, now that it's been like, four years, I'm able to see that it's kind of a bit of a piece of shit, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's pretty much about his character, and um, I'm not going to try and explain it. It's too complicated. Watch the trailer if you want. Type in the Double O Kid trailer. It is a bit about out of print, but I don't know. I ordered this one like off eBay a couple years back just because it was a Corey Haim film because I've been into him for a while, but, you know, it's just... Oh, yeah, and by the way, if you didn't know, Corey Haim is dead. He died in... 2010. Corey Feldman is still alive, but Corey Haim, this guy, he died, sadly, so rip to him, uh, but yeah, this just was not a good film. No disrespect to him, I just, I wasn't a fan of it, but I do um, own it. In 1993, we have National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon. This was one of the National Lampoon spinoffs. I actually did like this one. Emilio Estevez, Samuel L. Jackson is in this, and Corey Feldman actually has a cameo in this. He plays like a young cop, and he says like some stupid, like shitty line. And just has a quick little cameo, but still, he is in it, so I did have to mention this one. Up, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Corey Feldman is also in this. I believe he did the voice of Donatello. He was in the first one, and the third one, he was not in the second one, though, for some reason. But yeah, this was probably the worst of them, but I mean, you know, he was in the first one, which is pretty good. But yeah, I haven't watched this probably in like four or five years, just because it's I don't really watch these anymore. But I mean, yeah, it was definitely a favorite when I was younger, and... 
he plays the voice of Donatello in this, and not much else to say, but yeah. We have their first film that they did, uh, like, it had been a couple years, and then they did this, that is National Lampoon's Last Resort. I can't really remember a lot besides he has, like, an uncle who lives on this island. They go over to the island, and that's all I really remember. It was a pretty bad film, and as you can see, there's Haim right there, and Feldman. I don't know, I felt like uh, Corey Feldman was kind of trying to be, like, too much like Michael Jackson in this. He, like, was just dressing, as you could see, like, I don't know. Um, it wasn't a bad film. It wasn't great, though. I picked this up a couple months back just to kind of add it to the collection. It's not the worst film that they've had, but it definitely was not my favorite. It's still worth checking out, though, if you're a fan of their of their work, of their movies and stuff. Fun fact, they actually had four more National Lampoon movies that Corey Haim and Corey Feldman were supposed to do, but that one flopped so bad that after that, they canceled every single one. So that just proves that it was truly a... Piece of shit. So we have Snowboard Academy starring Corey Haim and Jim Varney from the Ernest films and also Bridget Nielsen who had been in Prayer of the Roller Boys. I think maybe, actually she wasn't. She was in Double O Kid though in one other movie with uh, Corey Haim. So it's like her third film with him. It's pretty much like Ski Patrol if you guys have ever seen that. But it's pretty much about like this place. It's known for skiing and Corey Haim's like this kind of rebel snowboarder. And um, he starts doing like snowboarding lessons and they have this big competition going on to, it's like hard to explain. Well, this is another one, just watch the trailer for it, but really cool movie. Pick this up at a record store. I do really like it. Um, I know a lot of people don't, but I actually did enjoy this film a little bit. Okay, we're nearing toward the end, but from, I believe, 1997, we have Demolition University. So, yeah, this is after he had died. That's why it says remembering the teen idol, but... Yeah, I like how they use this picture, and I believe this picture is from... It looks like it's the exact same picture from uh, License to Drive. So, I mean, it's a little interesting, am I right? But cool, decent film. They had a... This was actually the sequel to a film called Demolition High, which I'd recommend checking out. Haim was in it as well. It hasn't been released on DVD, but if you have, like, Amazon uh, Fire Stick and you have uh, Amazon Prime, you could watch it on there for free. Or I believe you can get the VHS of it. I think there might be a DVD, but you, it's only released in Japan. So if you have a region free player, you can watch it, which I do. I've just, I haven't picked it up for some reason, but this was definitely worse than the first one. The first one I'd give like a, a seven out of 10 stars. This I would give like a four out of 10. It just wasn't that good. Pretty much it's about this, this group of uh, college students who go to this power plant to uh, just kind of explore and it gets overtaken by terrorists. And of course, Corey Haim, has to help his entire class and his love interest get out of the uh, the power plant and pretty much kill off the terrorists. So yeah, it's a pretty crazy plot. Like I said, the first one, Demolition High, is pretty good. This one was okay, but if you if you watch the first one, you might as well watch this. And um, yeah, the thing we have right here is a pretty good film, and that is Polly Shore is dead. Polly Shore, I love. I I honestly need to do a uh, a collection at some point on his movies, but uh, both of them and it actually had so it had Corey Feldman. He played like a drug dealer in this. I think he played himself as a drug dealer, and then Corey Haim was actually at the very end of this when they all sang like the child star song. He was uh at the very end, I believe. I think he was in this, but yeah, and, like Charlie Sheen was in this. This is a really funny film. Essentially, Polly Shore pretty much. He be, he's irrelevant, so he fakes his death to get more attention, and then people find out he's not dead, and it's just a shitstorm from there. So yeah, but if you like Polly Shore, or you just like comedy, to be honest, I'd recommend checking this out. It's pretty funny, and uh, even though they don't have a big part in it, they did still play in this. And this came out in 2004, I believe. The end. I know, right? That is the end of this, uh, this collection video. Altogether, I think I just showed you like 15 of them. Quick. Oh, I hope I don't drop these. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Pretty good. Give it a big thumbs up. Let's try for 15 likes. Subscribe for more. Let's try and get to 340. We're all like 338 to 339 at the time of this uh, filming for more. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Yeah.